It's Five O'Clock on a Wednesday, and it's time for... The Craig and Marlon Magic Review Show. I'm Craig. I'm Marlon. Welcome back to another review show right here on... Magic TV. Absolutely. Got four tricks, four really awesome tricks to look at this week. So if you like good magic, you are absolutely in the right place. So once again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning into Magic TV. I really appreciate it. Do you really appreciate it? He's obnoxious. He doesn't care. But it doesn't matter. Shut up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that he's the worst kid in the world and he's an obnoxious brat. It makes no difference. <laughs> makes no difference because we're going to crack on. We're going to crack on with the review show anyway. Let's start off with a highly anticipated trick. One that has the potential to be trick of the year. Um, and it's really good. Let's have a look at that one first. So first off, we've got Scotch and Whiskey by Hanson Chen Production Co. Dot. Yeah, it's hey. <laughs> Hanson Chen. And it's Tom Eldfield who created the trick. Uh, mm -hmm. And you sat there and watched the whole tutorial. I like, I like the title, Whiskey. Yeah, it is very clever. Nice play on words. Uh, and what, the reason it's called Scotch and Whiskey, by the way, is, called, is because this is obviously based... Is Scotch a drink? Yes, it's, it's, yes, it oh, is. Oh, so it's scotch and whiskey. Yeah, but the original um, um, scotch and soda um, was... Scotch and soda? Yeah, it was the coin. You know, the the, the magnetic locking coin. Oh, like, you've got okay. one that's a £2 and a 50p, right? So yeah. you, you have a scotch and... Uh, you, you have one of those coins. This is basically the same thing in So I've got form. a scotch and soda coin. Yeah, you have, yeah. So I, and I've also got a scotch and whiskey. Yes, you have. Key. So what this is, in essence, and I don't think we're giving too much away by saying this because they've been very honest in the, in the adverts, this is a way of making a key vanish in a very, very deceptive way. So the silver key is actually a shell and mm -hmm. the gold key is actually double-sided, so it's an insert. Yeah. And in the... That one, they're just normal. We'll talk about that in a minute. So, in essence, what happens is you can have those two keys on the key fob. You can put them into someone's hand. And when you put them into someone's hand, they will lock. And when they take them out themselves, one of the keys have vanished. That's the basic, simple application for this. Two keys, put them into your hand, have one of them vanish and appear somewhere else. Now, Ryland actually did this for Instagram. And he made the, uh, he just did a very simple thing where the key vanished and went into your pocket. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a look at that first of all. So let's have a look at that. This is a really simple application of the gimmick, but it's something that you can literally do within seconds of actually getting the set. Now, there's a lot more you can do with these as well, though, isn't there? Like, you watched the whole tutorial with Tom, and he went through everything with a fine-tooth comb. He's, I've never seen Tom Eldful, uh sort of uh, present a tutorial before, he, but... He, he, he said lots of... He said one joke. Yeah, but... I forgot the joke, but he did say joke. <laughs> but, he said a joke. Well, he's a funny guy, but also, the, um, the, the, the tutorial you said was very, very thorough. Like, oh, the joke was like, hopefully this will open doors for you, yeah. as in like literally their keys, so they will open doors for you. <laughs> it's a very funny joke, but the tutorial was very thorough, wasn't it? Like it mm -hmm. runs about an hour. There's lots of live performances. I said I haven't finished it yet. No, you have. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I finished it the other day, didn't I? Yeah, like yeah. You, I told oh, you, we gone. couldn't do the review show until you finished it. Oh, have you been drinking again? What? Have you been drinking again? I'm so sorry. At the age of 11, he's, 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 he's become an alcoholic. It's terrible. I haven't. I can't stop him. I really can't. I haven't. It's why he loves this trick so much, because he sees scotch and whiskey. No, and it I haven't. It makes him excited. He, he, no, can't he, he can't help it. He can't help it. I don't. It's okay. It's fine. It's a problem that you can deal with. Um, <clears throat> let's move what? on. Let's move on. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. You'll get over it. What? Just, just the, the, the steps. You can take them one at a time. You're good. What? Um, so... Uh, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> but it, what you have is we had the deluxe version actually you had a deluxe version i had the deluxe version mm -hmm. and the deluxe version comes with the scotch and whiskey gimmick so you get the normal set which everybody gets and boy if you get the deluxe version you don't get the gimmick but you get an extra ring thing key fob key fob yeah 
you get a normal key. A normal gold key. Normal gold key. And a normal silver key. So if you get the deluxe version, you can do lots of other things because then you've got a normal Extra silver keys. key and a normal gold key. And they've left no stone unturned. They've gone through. No, no, don't show them that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Michael, that out. So they've got, uh, there's lots of different options in terms of the tutorial goes through loads of different routines. Mm -hmm. And you filmed a longer routine for the review show as well, didn't you? Which was like yeah. a transposition, um, yeah. two keys changing places a couple of times and then vanishing and going into your pocket. So if you want to see a longer way that you can do this, this is Ryan doing this on Jack. I love the way that this happens in the spectator's hand. So I love the fact that the, at the end of this particular routine, Jack's holding on to the, um, the two keys. Yeah. And when he pulls it out, just one of those keys has vanished. I mean, that is so strong, yeah. like so ridiculously strong. So let's have a look at a performance of that as well. Okay, so I'm here with my friend Jack. Hello. And I've got two keys, a gold key and a silver key. Nice. Now I'm going to put both keys inside my hand and I'm going to take one key out. Let's see. Oh, we've got the silver key, okay? Right. And I'm going to give them a little shake and you can see they, they change places. I'll tell you what, maybe you missed it, so we'll do it again. I'll take out one key. I'll take out the silver key again. So I'll do this, yeah? Yeah. And uh, you can see, if we give it a little shake, they change the places <laughs> again. Now, uh, this time, we're going to we're gonna use this. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the two keys on. We'll put the gold key on. Like that. And we'll put the silver key on like that. Right. Okay, so we've got the two keys here. Now, Jack, what I want you to do is hold your hand out like that. Okay? Now, I'm going to put the two keys into your hand, okay? Okay. So, uh, you've got to squeeze tightly into your hand, yeah? Yeah. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do something magical. Because if I snap my fingers, I'm going to take that and do that. Now, if you if you turn over your hands over and open your hand, what's inside your hand? What the f Where's everyone? See, there's only one key, and that's the silver key, but you can actually see that this key now is underneath the card. What do you got there? Ah! Wow. So, in essence, that's everything that you need to know. I mean, I think we do need to say that the, the actual gimmicks are so well made. Mm -hmm. Like, Jack has seen a lot of magic, and Rylan showed this to him, and he's like, that's one of the best things that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Like... You know, I love key magic. As people know, I've got a lot of tricks that involve keys. <laughs> I love key magic. And yeah, I am going to be... All uh, yours are terrible. Thank you. Yes, we know you don't like them. Uh, what? Are we done? There's two. Uh, okay. Um, so I, I love key magic. And, and this you is... Combine, could you combine this with Great Keeper and Key Magic? Maybe, yeah, you could, yeah. Um, you absolutely could. But yeah, I, I think maybe... I can't it, wait to get them right you want nightshade? I thought you said you didn't like my stuff and everything's rubbish. Nightshade's the only one that's good. Nightshade's the only one that's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about all the other ones that you have in your close-up set that you actually do all the time? When did? When was the last time you actually saw me do one of your tricks? Shut up. No, no, seriously. When was the last? Okay. Cube fifty-two. Uh, ages, ages ago. When was the last time you did a timing solve, Ryland? Because I invented the timing solve with the Rubik's cube. When was the last Actually, time? Actually, that was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, but that was recent because that's a cube thing. Yeah. But cube fifty two, I don't. Do I? Well, no. You tell me. <laughs> you do my stuff. Like what? I'm not getting into it now. A little <laughs> sausage. Um. Anyway, children should be seen and not heard. Shut up. Anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, look, the, the quality of uh, the quality of the gimmicks really good. Like this is great, and once those two keys are locked together, you're not going to see anything at all. That is true. Um, now we should reference um, Chris Rawlins because Chris Rawlins earlier on this year bought out Hide a Key, which is a very similar thing. Hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Is that different? Yes, totally. Oh. Um, so it was Hide a Key. Um, which, if you remember, was exactly the same as this, but they didn't lock together. So, in other words, you had the two keys and you had them on the keychain and they, they vanished. Now, oh, that's cool. you, you performed this, we reviewed it. <laughs> now, Hide a Key is great, don't get me wrong, we gave Hide a Key a very good review for good reason, it's a very good trick. Mm -hmm. um, 
and it's very well made and all of that fun stuff and, and so on and so forth. I, I personally think Scotch and, Scotch and whiskey is better because I love the fact that they lock together. There's advantages and disadvantages. With Heineke, the advantage is that you're immediately reset because there's no locking system. The disadvantage is there's a lot of stuff that you can do with these that you couldn't necessarily do with Heineke because they don't lock together. They're not examinable. So the routine that you did to Jack which ended up with it happening in his hands, you couldn't do that with Heideke. You couldn't do that with Heideke. You'd have to use Scotch and Whiskey. Um, I personally think the Scotch and Whiskey is a little bit better, but Heideke is still very, very good. I personally am probably going to be doing Scotch and Whiskey more than Heideke, um, but I've still got Heideke and I've still done it, you know, quite a lot this year. It's a mm -hmm. very good trick, Heideke. but obviously you need to, you need to think about that. Um, but yeah, so this is great. The tutorial's good. The gimmick is very well made. Um, it's going to last you a lifetime. Is the edition more expensive? Obviously, yes, because you're getting the extra keys. If you want to just do the routines that you saw Ryland do, you don't need the deluxe version. You can do all of yeah, that and a whole bunch more. It's only just to get extra keys. Yeah, just to get some normal versions. Maybe, maybe these are just make examinable kind of. Well, no, there's a lot of but different. You know, no, they're already examinable. Yeah, like the normal exactly. version. The normal, exactly. These are used to do extra routines and extra bonus routines and so on and so forth. If you've got a creative mind and you like creating your own versions of tricks, you want to get the deluxe version because having those regular keys gives you more options in terms of performing. Hey, so, Daddy's head. Thank you. So I'm giving this a hundred. I'm giving this hundred and twenty percent. What are you giving? I'm gonna give it hundred twenty percent. Hundred and twenty percent. This is one of the best tricks that we've seen this year. It's absolutely amazing. It's called uh, Scotch and whiskey. Well done, no, Tamal. Scotch and whiskey. Well done, Scott Elderfield. Well done, Hanson Chen. This is fantastic. Really? Right. So next we have Chop Shop by P3. Uh, Penguin Magic and John Bannon and any day that John Bannon releases a packet trick is a good day in my book I love packet tricks I love John Bannon I love Penguin Magic you put the three of them together you get gold dust uh, this is something that's been put out many many years ago before as part of a bigger project by Big Blind Media but what you're having here is you're having in-depth tutorial by John Bannon and by Eric Tate Eric and John sit down together. They go through the whole routine. There's a live performance by John Bannon. There's then live performances by Eric Tate. They leave no stone unturned and uh, they make it so that it's very easy for you to understand exactly what's going on. Now, uh, if you haven't seen Chop Shop, I'm going to show you a performance of me doing it to Jack now. Um, so this is uh, me. I'm actually performing this one. So let's have a look at... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did you Shut up. So you let's. did do one. I did do one. So let's have a look oh at this. Oh my God. Do you know why I did this one, Ryland? Why? Because you've got the worst Elmsley count in magic. Like Harry and Nardi has a bad Elmsley count. But honestly, when you look That's at. Rude. When you look at Harry Nardi's Elmsley count, it looks like the greatest Elmsley count of all time compared to your shocking travesty. Honestly, if Alex Elmsley saw you doing an Elmsley count, he would literally turn over in his grave. Worst Elmsley count Ever. So you feel ashamed of yourself. I'm embarrassed that you're my son. Let's have a look at a performance of this done by somebody who doesn't do a pant soundsly count. <laughs> have a look at this. We've got Rylan behind the camera today, so anything could happen. Don't know if this is going to work oh, oh, out or not. Uh, but I am going to give you a chance to win some money. Oh, I money. I've got four cards. Now, three of them are jokers, and I also have the Queen of Spades. I'm going to take the Queen of Spades in a second, put it in my pocket, and try and sneak it back inside uh, this packet. You've got to try and catch me. Now, to make it easy for you, I have made it so that the Queen of Spades has got a different coloured back. Queen of Spades has got a, uh, a red back. So it's going to be fairly easy for me to, uh, uh, for you to follow what's going on, because obviously the Queen of Spades is the only one with a red back, right? Seems so easy. I'm <laughs> going to put it in my pocket. Are you ready? Yeah. When you say go, I'm going to do it. Go. Done. What do you mean? I, I, did you miss it? Look, there's the, uh, there's the red back card back again. There's the Queen of Spades. I told you I was going to do it. But just watch one of your pockets. Well, should I do it again? Yeah. I'll do it again. Look, 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 look. I'm going to take the Queen of Spades, put it in my pocket, right? right? Now, it's going to be a bit harder this time because you're watching, right? So I have to misdirect you. That means making you look somewhere else. That will help me make you look somewhere else. Do you know why? 
because now I've got this card in here that says look on it. It's going to be very easy for you to look somewhere else because there's the, uh, this is called misdirection. Look, 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 look. See, you're looking over here. You're not looking at the queen. Even though you thought you were, you weren't, which means it's already done. It's right back there. What the hell? I know, crazy, right? But the thing is, I have to be honest with you, and I'm going to be honest for the first time ever. I cheated twice. Well, shocking. Yeah, yeah. You thought I was doing a trick with jokers and the queen. Uh, that's actually an ace of spades. What? Yeah, and these jokers, uh, they're actually the other three aces, <coughs> and uh, you can examine them if you want to. It's way, that's weird, right? Where did they come from? I have no idea. So, that was Chop Shop. A um, little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Still love you, bro. <laughs> I know, we'll sit around all afternoon, and I'll help you work on your arms account. Okay. You don't want to do that. No, you don't. You hate card tricks. He's going, okay. He's, he couldn't think of anything he'd rather not do than sit around for a couple of hours learning an Elmsley Camp properly. Um, <clears throat> anyway, we'll have to make sure you've got a good Elmsley Camp for Blackpool. And everybody, if you're at Blackpool, go up to Ryan and say, hey, Ryan, show me your Elmsley Camp. And we'll see how good you think no, it is. No, please don't. Yeah, do. Please do. Don't. If you're at Blackpool, no, no. go up to Ryan no. and say, show me your Elmsley Camp. I'm not going to Blackpool then. Really? Well, you better. You're in the family entertainer of the year, mate. What are you going to do? I'm going to just rush in, do that, and walk out. Oh, are you now? Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. fair enough. Fair and enough. then come to the vapor to watch Matt Bob. Put on. Mm -hmm. So you're not coming to the, you're not coming to the Ruskin until three in the morning. And I'll do that. You'll do that. Okay. So when you see him in the Ruskin, no, he's going to have a terrible. I'll disguise. bring a big Nerf gun. I'll bring one of my biggest, baddest Nerf guns. And then if you ask me to see the arms account, I load it and then oh. I just found it on the floor. <laughs> you can never pull it from. Can we get on with this review, please? <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Right, so oh. Chop oh. what you just saw there is a performance of Chop Shop. So Chop Shop's really good. Chop Shop is really good. And we talk about the Armsley Count. The only hey, move. That's where is. At the shops, yes. Yeah. The only move that you actually need in order to be able to do this is the Armsley Count. You do the Armsley Count, I think, five times in total. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's all you need. So if you can do an arms account, you can do this trick. It's actually very easy to do because you obviously know that any idiot can do an arms account well. Um, so as long as you can do an arms account, you can do the trick. Um, I, what I love... You just call me <clears throat> worse than an idiot. A little bit. Now... Ooh, you said no hitting, but I can have both. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, can we get on with this? Yeah. So, <clears throat> look... Uh, watching Eric and John explain this is just amazing. I love, you can just see how much They're respect. They're great at explaining. You, you can just see how much respect Eric Tate has for John Bannon, and rightfully so. John's one of my favourite magicians mm -hmm. of all time. Anytime John Bannon releases a packet trick, you should sit up and pay attention. This one is yep. especially good. It's true. Um, at the end, everything's examinable. All four of the aces are examinable. You've got this, they think they know where you're going with it. They think they know, hang on, okay, I understand the effect. Then all of a sudden, the yellow card with look appears on it. Then all of a sudden, like, you've done it again. And then you finish off and they've got four aces. And there were jokers that and a queen. It's like, yeah. it's like, how is this even possible? So it's a what? very strong trick. It's a kicker ending that you don't see coming. It's instantly reset. All you have yeah. to do is you walk away from the table, is just take the cards out of your pocket, put them back into the deck, and you reset ready to go again. Um, Pat Small plays big. I absolutely love this. Um, I think this is great. I'm a big fan of packet tricks. This is one of the best packet tricks I've seen. I am going to give this 95%. I love it. What about you, Mr. I've got a terrible answer to go? Mm. Um, I like it, but I don't know if I'll do it. Well, you don't, you don't do card tricks, do you? <laughs> no. You don't do card tricks. You're an embarrassment. Um, so what are you giving it? I'm not. What are you giving it? Uh, 79. 79% 79 from Ryland. Uh, but it's really good. It is really good, which is why I'm giving it 95%. Yeah. 95 for me, 79 for Ryland. Let's move on with the next review. Okay, so the third review today, we have Discovery by Preston Nyman. Spooky Nyman. Spooky Preston Spooky Nyman. Nyman. Spooky Nyman. Uh, by Discovery by Spooky Nyman Ooh. and Penguin Magic. And once again, it's incredible Penguin Magic packaging. It really is. Uh, what, is what is Discovery? Always with the packaging. Yeah. What, um, when I saw the trailer for this and I watched um, Preston performing it, I was just like blown away. I just couldn't fully understand how this could even be possible. But like I was watching it and I was trying to think through various different methods and various different techniques. And I was like, 
this is just too fair. And then when you open it and you look at what you've got inside and you realize actually this is really clever. And even though it's only a one in six choice, it feels more impossible than it actually should be. Mm -hmm. Now, you've performed this on Facebook. You've performed this on Instagram. You've done a few performances of this. But I'm going to get you... Uh, we're going to play the performance that you did to Jack now. Jack was blown away by this, by the way. And like I say, he's seen a lot of magic. Uh, Rylan's doing this sitting down. But it's designed to be a stand-up routine. Normally, you would mix the chips up behind your back. You were doing it under the table because, obviously, sitting down, it kind of made sense to do it under the table. So let's have a look at Rylan's performance to Jack and then we'll talk about what we think. Okay, so I've got my friend Jack here. Hello. And I have six poker chips. Okay. Now, these poker chips, they all had numbers on from one uh, all the way to six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Nice. Now, what we need to do is we need to think of any one of those poker chips. Okay. You got him? I got one. Okay. Now, I'm going to stack them up like this, okay? And I'll start giving them like a little uh, mix, yeah? Yep. And then I'm going to mix them under the table, okay? Ooh. I'll rub it in with it. Okay. Now, let's have a look at this one. Uh, no, I don't think of that one. Yes, I think I think it I think it might be that one. So I'm gonna put that one in my pocket now. Like Jack, for the first time, can you tell me what the ones uh, the the number you thought was? Two. Two. Okay. Now, if you look here, we've got three, we've got four, we've got uh one, we've got six, and we've got <gasps> five. The number that I took out was actually two. Wow. And if I reach into my pocket and show you the one that I took out, you can really see that the one that I took out was actually, you can get it. What? Two. How did you know that? What? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the pros and cons. First of all, the pros. This is a really great trick. Mm -hmm. It's a it's one amazing. in. It's amazing. It is amazing. It's one in six. Um, but th th it's so strong because they never tell you the number until you've made your prediction. It's not like once they've told you the number, you have to do something. Your hand is here with the other five chips. When they've told you the number, you immediately show that you've predicted that number and you reach in and take it out of your pocket. Um, that's really strong. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the next thing that's really strong about it, I think, is that the reset is almost instantaneous. Yeah. Like, you can reset this trick in probably about five seconds. Yeah, if that... just go. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's you, done. You, just, you literally just got to do yeah. that, turn that one over. Now, the next thing that's really good about it is because it's made out of poker chips, these poker mm -hmm. chips are always going to last a lifetime, and they're not going to break. It's not like using playing cards, and if you put them on a bar and you get beer on them, you can't use them again. If you've got beer on these, you just wipe it off, and you, you know, you, you're you good yeah, to... Yeah, I wouldn't touch it. Yeah, no. I don't. Well, you don't like beer, do you? Um, you do. Of... Yeah, I like beer, but you're more of a whiskey drinker. No, I'm um... not. No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, you're not. Um, and uh, what else is to say about that? So that, that, that there's only a couple of negatives as far as I can see. And they're not really negatives, but it's something that you should bear in mind. The first thing is you are going to need a table. You don't need a close-up pad or anything like that, but you are going to need a table because you're going to be laying those uh, chips out on the table um, and that you don't really want to be putting into someone's hand. So you are going to need a table surface to do this. So if you work predominantly walk around, this might not be something for you. The second thing to bear in mind, it's not really a negative, but it's something worth bearing in mind, is you are going to need to have really one pocket minimum maybe two dedicated to this trick yeah um you, you which is fine um but if you're one of those performers that struggles with pocket space and you carry a ton of stuff around and you haven't got pocket space you, one pocket definitely is going to be need to be allocated to this but you ideally maybe would want a second pocket as well but as long as you're aware of that then that won't be too much of a problem but you are going to need two pockets the other thing is and this isn't an issue, but it's worth bringing up in a review, is that the chips can't be examined beforehand 
They can't be mm-hmm. examined during, mm-hmm. and they can't be examined afterwards. Yeah. At no but point... The thing is, would they want to look at the ships? No, I don't think they would, because it's very, very clear what's it's, going on. Yeah. And, and Preston's put some really uh, subtle subtleties yeah, to in show, there. Just show that they're, they're normal. To show that they're normal, exactly. So I don't think it's an issue. People can see that they're poker chips. People know what poker chips are. I don't think when you pull out the number that they've named that they're going to want to examine the poker chips because I don't think the poker chips really, from their point of view, have anything to do with it. And you've performed this a couple of times now. I've performed it a couple of times now and we've never had an issue at all. And you can see the reactions on the trailer and you can see how strong the reactions are for this. Um, Other than that... There's nothing else to say. The props are really well made. This gimmick, you're not just getting the poker chips, you're getting a gimmick as well. I'm showing Ron the gimmick at the moment so he knows what I'm talking about. This gimmick is really well made. Mm-hmm. Um, leather. Yeah, made out of leather. Uh, everything that you need Last is in the one. box. The tutorial's about half an hour. I do have to give a shout out to Preston. The tutorial's one of the funniest tutorials I've ever seen. Uh, you know, there's this whole thing at the beginning where it's a live tutorial. Then you've got Preston walking off screen and handing over to another Preston, who then hands back to the first Preston. What? It's, just, it, you, it's the weirdest, most insane tutorial ever. Also, it's like it's like I found out that what that is. Yeah, it's Penguin Magic, but the M is turned on its side, so it's a three. Yeah, but it's P M. Yeah, P M. Penguin Magic. So you you don't say P three. It's Penguin Magic. Well, I think it is P three. The but... only reason it says um, the only reason it says in there P three is because that's an M on its side. I know. No, have you just realised this? No. Wake up and smell the coffee. It's 2024, mate. I know. Um, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give this. Actually, not. We've got some great tricks this week, thinking about it. I'm going to give this... It is when they're listening to it, but it's 23 right yeah. now. I know, we're so 24 when they're listening. You better wake up. It's 100% from me. What are you giving this? Look around you. 100%. Um, 100%, yeah. 100%. 120%. 120%. Wow. Getting Alakazam levels of approval, this is. 120% from uh, Ryland, 100% from me. Oh, this is it. a real, this is a real worker. And I'm going to keep it. Ryland can't have it. He can't have it. Okay. Yes. I've lost discovery. Um, yeah, it's, it's insanely good. Let's move on with the next. So the final trick that we have today is Aces by Michael Chatelain and Gimmick Magic. Now, Michael Chatelain uh, has a habit of bringing out really strong gimmicked card magic that allows you to do hyper-visual uh, card routines in a very easy way because the gimmick does all the work for you. What you have here is one gimmicked card. So you get this one gimmicked card. Now, this one gimmick card is gimmicked in so many different ways. Yeah. But what it allows you to do, in essence, is do visual or non-visual changes um, uh, right in front of people's eyes. And there's, there's four or five different routines that uh, uh, Michael goes through with this. Uh, he's got a really nice way of actually taking an ace and splitting it into two aces, a little bit like uh, Adam Wilbur's Splits Project. Uh, he's got a really nice ambitious card. He's got a really nice transposition. But in essence, you can turn one a red ace into a black ace or a black ace into a red ace. I was going to say, couldn't you go from like, couldn't you go from like black uh, to like a red? Like yeah, you could do. Yeah, you could do. Yeah. Back to red. Yeah, you could do. Well, let's show them a performance. Um, yeah. This is a uh, a simple app- Excuse me. This is a simple application of it. This is the first thing that they actually go through on the tutorial. It's a very simple kind of ambitious card where the ambitious card fails and then you get it right afterwards. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at that first of all. So this is a performance of Ryland doing that kind of ambitious cardy style routine to Jack. Okay, so I've got my friend Jack here. Hello. Now, Jack, just say stop. Stop. There. Okay. Uh, look at that card. Yep. Yeah, we'll show them that card. Yeah, yeah okay. It. Now uh, we'll put that there and I'll put it in the middle of the deck. There we go. Okay. And you can see that that card is really going into the middle, yeah? Yep. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap my fingers and I'm going to do something incredible. Now, Jack, was your card an ace? It was. Was your card the ace? Wasn't that one? Oh, wasn't that ace? Nope. Um, I'm sure we can. Uh, I'm sure. I'm sure we can fix this. Um, I'm gonna give it a little snap. 
Do you have the S of spades? <gasps> that was my card. So, in essence, what you just saw there, what you are getting with this effect, is the ability to turn a red ace like this and show a red ace and, and literally turn yeah. it... Into, awesome. yeah, into... When you get it right... Okay, it you practiced really that good. I didn't, but yeah, <laughs> get it into uh, a black ace. And and, really cool. and you can do it visually. You saw Ryland do it non-visually, so you can actually turn it around, flick it, and then show it's changed. When you flick it, I get a little bit scared, so what I do is I do it a whole bit. Oh, that makes sense. Or you can do it non-visually. Like it feels like it's going to... Come off. Yeah. Like now you can do it visually if you want to by rubbing it and having it change, but that's a little bit more difficult, uh, and you Especially need slightly bigger hand. hands. Yeah, and if if, if you're left handed, oh, it becomes it. even more difficult. Yeah, I mean it's still difficult, but I gotta like turn my hand like that. Yeah, I mean that looks okay. But it's it's still difficult because I'm a lefty. Yeah. Okay. It's easy for you. Yeah. You, you, you now do. now I'm gonna show you one I'm more different. performance. I'm gonna show you one more performance of this, and then I'm gonna talk about what I think, and you can talk about what you think. Um. The next performance is one that Ryland did on Instagram and it was done to music and it's basically another application of using these cards which is just having two aces, a black ace and a red ace and making them change places mm -hmm. um, in a very clean way. So let's have a look at that one right now. So there you go, there's a couple of different applications for the Aces gimmick. There are a lot of other things that you can do with it as well, but there's a couple of ideas. Now, let me tell you what I think. First of all, the gimmick is very well made. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's going to last as It'll long last as a playing long card long will long. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a very well the made gimmick. The gimmick will last as long as the playing card. Yeah, exactly. So it's a very well made so gimmick. If, if basically, if the playing card gets wet, the, the, the gimmick's going to work well. Yeah. Uh, and the actual change isn't really that difficult to do because the, the gimmick does a lot of the work for you. So you didn't spend too much time learning this at all. Um, and you can do the visual change, you can do the non-visual change. The actual way of doing it is very, very easy. Um, also, the tutorial is good. There's no live performances, but uh, Michael does go through everything with a fine tooth comb. So you understand exactly how the gimmick works. I have two issues with this. Now, I know you really like this, don't you? Yeah, I like it, but I don't know if I'll do it. Okay. Let me explain my two problems with this. You just made it look like it was floating. Okay, good. Let me explain my two problems with this. Now, the first problem is, in essence, what you have here is an ace of hearts changing into an ace of spades. Yeah? I mean, what, you don't need a, nice. you don't need a gimmick. You could just use a double lift. Or an you could use an a, a, no, not, not an ounce account, account. an Erdnays change. You could oh, use an Erdnays change. Right, I'm telling you right now. Go grab me a deck of cards, and I'll explain what I mean. <gasps> uh, because I know that you love this, and I know you kind of disagree with me. So I want to explain what I mean. There, there's a deck there, right? There's a blue deck there, okay. right there, underneath that green sweater. Right. Yes. There's a deck Where? of cards right there. Oh, Can you just pass me the deck of cards? Yeah. Thank you. So found it. Hey, found it. Found it. So, so, for example, you could do that exact same trick. Hey, if, they're together. Yeah, they are together. Oh no, no they're not. Together. No, that's uh, something we. Yeah, that's here. the they're the wrong two ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll it's do, one of them. We'll just use these two. We'll just use these. Two. Oh, so they were together. Yeah, we'll just use these two. Whatever. So, uh, but but I mean, the advantage of this is you wouldn't even need to. But I could have you know take a card for me there, Ryan, if you can, please. That would be amazing. Wow. Fantastic. Look at it. Remember it. Don't forget it. Uh, pop it back there in the deck. We'll leave it in the middle. I'll give the cards a couple of cuts just to make sure it's lost. And I'll give the cards a shuffle just like this. And watch. I'm going to try and uh, make your card come to the top of the pack. Look at that. It's the Ace of Spades. Was that your card? No. It wasn't your card. Okay. Well, let me see if I can rub it. Look, if I rub that Ace of Spades, I can actually turn it into your <gasps> card, the King of Clubs. Is that your card? Yeah. Because the whole thing's an illusion. It's not real. You see, it never was a King of Clubs. It was the uh, it was the Ace of Spades. Of course, if I wanted this to be the Ace of Spades, I could give it a shake and turn it into the uh, the King of Clubs. And the reason is the Ace of Spades, that would be the one behind your ear. Hey! Now, I can do all of that with just a couple of simple slides. But now, the cards are examinable. Yeah. 
That, oh, that yeah. gimmick is not examinable. Once you look, once you've done the change and you've changed this ace of hearts into an ace of spades and you're here, you can't show the card fully. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It looks it looks good, but it, it's not, I wouldn't say. It looks they good. Want, they would want to examine it. That's what I'm saying. I, it looks good. I like it, but I don't know if I do it. Yeah, because at this point, they're going to want to examine it. You can't yeah. examine it. They're you can't even examine. let them touch it. You can't even let them go near it. You can't even take your hand off it. So you've changed this card, and you could argue that it's a better change. And the reason you could argue that is because um, you've only got the one card in play. But then, you you know, I don't do the Bertram change, but you know Nemed does. You could do a Bertram change or something like that, and you'd still have one card. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I just think simple sleight of hand replicates this. I think a gimmick is useful when it yeah. does something that you couldn't... If you're couldn't new, you would probably use the gimmick. Yeah. If you're new and you want to do a card change and you don't know how to do a double lift, then yeah. But I'd rather you spend the money on buying a book that teaches you how to do a double lift and learning that. You don't do card magic, but you use the double lift a hell of a lot. Yeah. Um, and And, you know, this, this, this is... Like I said, a gimmick is useful... When you're new or the gimmick does something that you could not do with sleight of hand. Yeah. Like you talked about the Nightshade coin set earlier. You yeah. can't do a lot of the routines that Nightshade is capable of doing. You can't do that with a regular coin. There's several routines, not all That's of them, what I want to get but I'd it. say probably 50% of the routines you can't do without that gimmick. It's impossible. Yeah. Well, Which with is why this, you get the gimmick. With this, you can do. Everything. You can do everything that this gimmick would do with the regular deck of cards, but without even that much complicated sleight of hand. But not only that, um, it's going to be examinable when you've done it. There's no gimmick that you need to worry about because it's just a deck of cards, which is why I'm going to give this 40%. I can't recommend it. I can't recommend it because it's a lot of money to get a gimmick that really isn't needed. What we have here, and Michael has released some amazing stuff over the years. So don't get me wrong. I think Michael's an amazing creator of magic. I really do. But I just don't think this is one of his best tricks. I think that he's created a, a, a solution to a problem that doesn't really exist. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm giving it 40%. Um, what's your I'm thoughts? I'm giving it uh, 60%. 60%. You like it more than me, mm -hmm. which is ironic because you don't like card magic. But there you go. So 60% from Ryland, 40% from me. Look, you've just seen what it I is. I like it because it looks good. It does look good. If you like what you saw, get it. But in all honesty, it's 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 the equivalent of swatting a fly. It's the equivalent of saying, oh, there's a fly. There's a fly over there. I don't like flies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of that fly. What are my options? I can open up the door and let it buzz its way out. I could, uh, I could I could get some fly spray. I could get a fly swatter. Um, or I could go and buy a bazooka and I could <laughs> blow up the wall that it's flying in front of. That's what we have here. It's the equivalent of killing a fly with a bazooka. There is absolutely no need for this gimmick at all. 40%. There's no vision in the bag. There's no vision in the bag. That's a new show with a cart driving across Daddy's head. Vroom! 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 I, I made it very clear in this review show there would be no Nerf guns. I forgot to say Lego. Thanks very much for joining us on Magic TV and this review show. I really appreciate it. Don't forget, you can follow Ryland on Ryland the Kid Magician on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. You can follow Magic TV by just following Magic TV. And don't forget, you can join The Netrix by going to www.thenetrix.com. It's .com. It's .com. It's .com. It's .com. It's, dot com. it's, dot com. it's not dot .cookies. It's never been dot .cookies. As far as I know, dot .cookies isn't even a thing. Dot .cookies will take you nowhere. Dot cookies doesn't even exist. But you know what? It's dot com. It's dot com. I will be back again next week with him if I haven't murdered him. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Craig. I'm Ryland. <laughs> we'll see you again. Thanks very much. Bye. Say bye, Ryland. Say bye, Ryland. Wave to the camera. Wave to the camera. It's cookies. It's not bloody cookies.